I mean, I don't know a better source uh, to, to update this situation than GA. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? You, you, good. You look relaxed. You look like you got the situation under relaxed. control. I don't feel relaxed. <laughs> I don't feel relaxed. I had to come into the office today. Holly, you mentioned it. Sometimes you got to come in and take care of business. I mean, Michael Smith, you know what happens in my house every time I try to get on a phone call of any import. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously woke up to the crazy news and uh, in Tennessee and just managing through it. I mean, thankfully we have protocols in place to try to get some of this under control before it gets worse. And um, my thoughts honestly right now are just hoping that nobody gets really sick. What's the latest? What's the latest information you have? The latest is that uh, the teams are currently, the Titans are currently still scheduled to play on Sunday and we're waiting for um, their test results to come back. So we'll see what happens over the course of the next couple of days. The Titans facility is closed at least for the next four days and the Vikings at least for the next two days. You know, George, you said you're hopeful that, that no one gets really sick. Uh, could you just walk us through some of the, uh, scenarios or some of the concerns that players had before uh, we agreed to these protocols. Is there anything that somebody raised and said, hey, what about this that's kind of playing out right now? Yeah, the, and the number one concern for players was actually not for themselves, it was for their families. Uh, you have a large number of players who have, uh, you know, are members of family, grandparents, kids, wives, aunts, uncles who may have pre-existing conditions and Again, this virus is not to be trifled with. Um, I think that's been the primary thing that players have been focused on. And for the most part, for the most part, players have been doing their part and personnel have been doing their part to keep each other safe and follow the protocols. But you guys said at the top, like, why we have masks. It's not just daily testing that's going to keep everybody safe. It's all of the protocols as well, because you can have asymptomatic spreaders, you can have false positives, you can have false negatives. A whole bunch of stuff can go wrong uh, with all this. So people have to really, you know, and then I know there's some fatigue, even for us as regular mm -hmm. humans, there's some fatigue. Um, but we all have to sort of keep in mind that uh, we are not in control of the virus. George, you are the, speaking of control, you are the Assistant Executive Director for External Affairs for the National Football League Players Association. We talked about variables earlier. Not only can players and, and the Players Association not uh, control or account for the circumstances that the players go home to when they leave the facility, but you can't necessarily control staff members, personnel, coaches, right. Just, you know, like, and, and their habits or, or their willingness to comply with the protocol. How complicated is that, that you're only talking about one group of people that you can actually have some governance over? The challenge we have is 32 different setups. I mean, we can, quote unquote, control what happens when a player or a coach or an NFL owner walks up to an NFL building or a facility, right? That person gets tested. They wait until they get their test result back. They go in. They have a mask when they're moving from place to place. And, they, you know, they've got technology that senses when they're too close to another person or player in the locker room. So we can control the environment in the facility. What we can't control is that what's happening in New York, New Jersey is vastly different from what's happening in yeah. Houston and Dallas and, you know, Florida, where apparently it's a free for all. Um those are things that we cannot account for. We can't um, measure and requires personal responsibility. And in some cases, guys just have to accept, or actually everybody just has to accept that if you're sick, stay home. If you've come in contact with somebody who's sick, stay home. Um, th those are things that we really have to rely on personal responsibility to get through the rest of the season. See, I, th I thought Mike was going here when he said you are uh, affiliated with the NFLPA. I was like, oh, here it is. Here, he, here he comes. And, and yeah. my question is this: how, how would you how would you characterize the communication between the NFLPA and say and the NFL Management Council, NFL ownership? Is everybody on the same page as far as what to do? That's what I was getting. At. In these situations, yep. yeah, is everybody good? And yeah, I think I think we've been on the same page because 
this union has mandated that most of these protocols get put in place to protect players. I mean, you know, thankfully we didn't go down the road back in June, July of arguing over money and, and the salary cap issues first. What we basically said to management council was if we don't get our protocols almost 100% perfectly right, there's not going to be any cash for us to argue over. So we really have advocated for a lot of the health and safety protocols you put into place. I think there's going to be announcement here in the next 12 to 24 hours about a continuation of daily testing through the season, uh, which is one aspect of keeping everybody safe, but that is a result of the union's advocacy. And, and again, to their credit, so far, management has not balked at um, any of the recommendations or demands that players have made to keep everybody safe. And we saw how swift and severe the punishment was for uh, some of the coaches the coach. being laxed when it comes to their, their masks on the sidelines. So are That's you right. confident, George, that, that you know, again, none of this virus is unpredictable, but just based on what you know as you sit here now, um, do you feel pretty good that this can be contained or, or is this perhaps something bigger in the beginning of it? What, is, what should gut tell you right now? I hope it's not an I'm unfair nervous. question, but just... I'm nervous. I, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm nervous. I, I really am. I'm nervous like the like the rest of us. I mean, look, the reality is you can trust the virus. You can't trust humans. And you, you, we know now what the how the virus spreads. We know more about infection. We know about asymptomatic spread. Um, we know that these things actually protect us uh, from from the spread and and you're seeing even community spread. Like, let's take the NFL out of it. New York City is starting to have community spread over 3% again. And I think that's a result of people having fatigue, but this is going to be a grind for um, everybody until we have some sort of better solution or a vaccine. Yeah. You know, George, since we have you, I, I want to look ahead a little bit. Is there any issue, uh, a pressing NFL PA issue that brother from another should stay uh, stay uh, focused on so we can kind of be ahead of the curve. Is there anything that we should be thinking about that maybe no one's talking about right now? I think we are all in seatbelts fastened, helmets on, try to get through three to five days with, with the virus and it's week to week. I think from a, from a business perspective, um, you know, Mike, Smith, you and I talked about this a little bit earlier. I think I'm seeing this generational passing of the torch in terms of um, players and, and, you know, from the just from the Sunday night game to the Monday night game, there was this interesting juxtaposition of the Rodgers Breeze matchup and how that was uh, characterized. And then you get the Lamar and Mahomes matchup last night and how that was characterized. I think that's something we're going to keep an eye on uh, in a positive sense, right? Like our stars are um, at, at key positions are getting uh, younger and blacker and bolder uh, than ever. And I think that's that's a pretty cool thing. No doubt. And, you know, it's, it's funny. It, it Maybe I just maybe I've been in, you know, in a bubble or under a rock or not following the right people. Um, but we came into the season in the aftermath of an offseason in which, you know, people like, you know, Patrick Mahomes really stepped into that boldness when it came to speaking out on issues of, of racial justice. Uh, you and I were talking practically daily in the aftermath of, uh, of George Floyd's yep. murder. So coming into week one, big story, you know, people tracking, what are the players doing pregame? You know, whether it's locking arms, taking a knee, in the locker room, out of locker room, videos, big story week one. Again, maybe it's just me. It feels like that's kind of gone away. It doesn't feel like a whole lot of conversation other than what's in the end zones. It doesn't feel like the conversation has continued just two weeks later surrounding uh, racial justice and social justice initiatives. Is that my imagination? And if it's not, why do you think that is? Well, first of all, I'm glad we're not talking about what the players are doing. And the conversation mm -hmm. was never about what the protest was or when the protest was going to be. The protest, as you know, was really f about raising awareness and talking about the conversations around social injustice, the murder of Breonna Taylor, why allegedly um, 
there have been, you know, cover-ups in that, in that case, uh, and, and we'll learn more about that. But the conversations are really about the injustices, not about the protest. So in a way, I'm happy that we're not um, doing a TikTok on who stayed in the locker room, who didn't, who came right. out, who took a knee, who put somebody on their jersey and who didn't. The conversation has to stay focused on um, the underlying issues and obviously people getting out the vote. Don't let's not let's not get it twisted. I mean, we still have power. The, the, the national elections are coming up. Early voting's coming up. All of that's at stake. People got to get out and vote. Word. Hey, George, th this is not an interrogation, but two point, qu two part question Inter here. Don't, don't interrogate don't, away. Don't, <laughs> hey, that's my brother from another dude. We, we, we interrogate love. away, George. That's GA. That's that's not that's not George Tyler from the National Football League Players Association. You're looking at GA right now. That's the, that's the GA right. look. So, <laughs> He's chilling. That's, that, that's the GA look. So I'm going to ask you the first part of the question is how long have you been with the NFLPA? How many years? Since um, officially since May of 2009, so 11 years. All right, I've so seen a lot and of, the, I've seen a lot of stuff. That's yeah, that's and that's where I'm going with it, uh, George. Because in 11 years, I'm, I'm thinking about 2009, 2010, 11. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of protests from from NFL players. I like how do you um, like how would you how would you just just give your perspective? How would you characterize this evolution where players are not asking for permission? They're not asking to be liked. They're just doing it. And I can and tell how has, yeah. yeah. I can tell you from the union's role, okay, when when you know I was fortunate enough to be hired in this role and Demore Smith was elected as the executive director of the union, he came in brash, outspoken, bold, and actually the first social issue that we stepped up and, and D spoke out about was I don't know if you guys remember, but Rush Limbaugh was supposed to be part of an ownership group to buy the Rams when they were in St. Louis. Mm. And, you know, we were on that hell no tip way back in 2009 with him. And people were like, well, why is D speaking out on an issue that he doesn't really know about? Um, same thing with Michael Brown in 2014 when players came out and did hands up, don't shoot. Uh, you know, we supported the players and uh, made sure that their right to demonstrate was protected. So I can just tell you where the union's always been uh, in terms of having the players' backs when they want to speak out on these issues. Now, it doesn't come without heat, as we know, but um, these issues are not easy, and speaking out about them uh, to anybody who, who is speaking out on an injustice. That's just the history of America. Yo, man, we could keep you here all day. And, and we got, this is your brother from another debut. We're going to have you back again um, under better circumstances. We're not talking Please. about, you know, uh, you know, COVID coming in. But I, before we let you go, I know you got a you got a class to get to. I'll get to that in a second. Real quick. What can you tell us? What's the latest with the Tara Taylor situation? Oh, good question. Uh, still fact finding. That's a short answer. Okay. We're still fact finding. Go. We're still trying to, um, you know, we we. We definitely uh, kicked off uh, an investigation as soon as we heard uh, what happened with him. Uh, but, you know, taking action, that, that second part, we, we carefully measure what we're going to do before we quit. So still in fact-finding okay. phase, probably still going to be another couple of weeks before um, a decision's made on what direction we want to go. All right, definitely keep us posted. But look, man, you're about to go... Uh, teach a class. Oh, class. You've already dropped well, the knowledge well, on at Boston yeah, College yeah. with Scott Pioli, Michael Holly with Scott Pioli, right? Scott Pioli, Boston College. What? Yeah, a lot of BC alum out there. I mean, that's at actually that's at four thirty. At three thirty, we have uh, you know a little internal call we have to get through about what happened today. So you got a little business. You got a little business. <laughs> but wait, but tell us what <laughs> tell us what the lesson is. What's the what, what you teaching? What is it? The uh, the business of the NFL. What's, what's the lesson today? What you, what you, yeah, what's your school I'm on? sure the lesson today is going to be thrown out the window with what, what happened today. Everybody's right. going to, want to talk about the, the, a lot of what we do, you know, you get sort of popped up in headlines of the PA this, investigated that, deflate gate, Elliot, lockout, CBAs. I think part of what I want to try to do today with the students at BC is give a longer run of history and, and how really unions build on um, 
build over time their strength, their power, their leverage. So, Holly, to your question about, you know, well, it doesn't seem like uh, players have really been out in full force and now they're just doing it without asking permission. Well, the evolution of that is actually building blocks on successes and wins from the past. So hopefully that's uh, what the lesson plan will be for today. All right. Great. Well, we appreciate record the knowledge, that, man. Record, record that class. Record yeah. it. Record that class. I'll, We'd like I'll to check come it out. Back. I'll come back and we can talk anytime. All right. No doubt. All right, GA. Take care of yourself, I man. Thank you. appreciate you guys. Take care. All right. That's well, good stuff right there. That was that was real. That was real newsy of us. I felt like a TV show. Yeah. Got to. We got to get back to clowning.